we have a very important question which I'd like to begin by answering. It is pertaining divorce. Uh, some people say we hear about the term al talaq al bid'i or the bid'i talaq and the Sunni talaq. What is the difference and whether uh, it does count or not? Al talaq al bid'i is a divorce that is done not in accordance to the Sunnah, rather in contradiction to what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Quran prescribed. If a person decided to divorce his wife, or if a couple came to an agreement. To separate via divorce. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran in the very first verse of chapter at talaq of divorce, Ya ayyuhan nabiyu idha talaqutumun nisa'a fa talliquuhunna li'iddatihinna wa ahsul idda. Which means, O oh Prophet, when you divorce women, divorce them, add their idda. The idda is a prescribed period. And count it accurately. Fa talliquuhunna li'iddatihinna, which means, there is a certain time which the person is allowed to divorce his wife during or the couple may agree to divorce during this time and there is a certain time which is not permissible to divorce or uh, uh, pronounce or file for a divorce during this time. The time which is not permissible if a woman is experiencing her menses. Look at the uh, hikmah and the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because normally when a woman is going through uh, the period, the menstruation or experiencing the PMS, she's also going through hormonal uh, changes and she may get angry and that may infuriate the husband and uh, if he does not keep in mind that it is not permissible to divorce her during this time, uh, divorce will be widespread when they pick up a fight for a minor thing. This is as far as the psychological part of divorce. As far as uh, maintaining the family lineage and a nasl, the Prophet sallallahu when Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu arda came to him and said that his son, Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, divorced his wife while she was in her menses. He said, Murhu fal yuraji'aha hatta tathur. Order him that he should return her back to his marriage life until she is in a state of purity after the menses. Then, afterward, if she experiences the menses and she is pure, if he wants to divorce her, then he may divorce her with one condition, before having an intimate relationship with her. And that explains to us the difference between the bid'i divorce and the Sunni one. The bid'i divorce or Talaq, not in accordance with the Sunnah, which is rejected, and the husband will be committing a sin if he were to divorce his wife during this time, if he divorces her while she is experiencing her menses, or after she finishes her menses, she is in a state of tuhr or purity, and he happened to have an intimate relationship with her. Why? Because there is a possibility that maybe she conceived so the idda which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed as in the very first verse of Surah Al-Talaq, فَطَلِّقُوهُنَّ لِعِدَّتِهِنَّ is to maintain and to make certain that she is not pregnant. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah, in, in surah Al-Baqarah, وَالْمُطَلَّقَاتُ يَتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ ثَلَاثَةَ قُرُوءٍ Let the divorced women wait before having the right to remarry or accept any marriage proposals, they must wait for three periods, three quru. Now whether the quru, which is plural of qur, is the menses or the period of tahara after uh, the menses, the issue is during this idda, which is either three quru, three periods, or three months if a woman does not experience the period anymore, during this time, if it is after the first or the second divorce, that's called reversible, revocable. The husband has the right to recall his wife back to his marriage life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, الطلاق مرتان فإمساكم بمعروف أو تسريح بإحسان One may divorce his wife once and the second time. And after the first and the second time, within the idda, which is three quru, three periods, it is permissible for him to return her back to
to his marriage life. But after the iddah is over, then that would require, if it is after the second and the third, and after the period is over, that would require her consent, an agreement of the wali, and a new dowry, and a new marriage contract. If it was after the third divorce, then the third divorce is irrevocable, irreversible, and they will not be able to remarry once again, before she marries somebody else, as we spoke about this before repeatedly. So if somebody wants to divorce his wife, and he found that she is in her period, or having her menses, it is haram to divorce her during this time. And if she's not in the period, but he happened to have an intimate relationship, a complete sexual relationship with her during this time, he also is not permitted to divorce her during this time. Which makes the process, which slows down the process of divorce and gives him a respite and gives him a chance to reconcile. This is a great divine wisdom. Then afterward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لا تخرجوهن من بيوتهن ولا يخرجن إلا أن يأتين بفاحشة مبينة. During the idda, which is the three quru, it is not permissible to kick them out of their houses, which initially are owned by their husbands. They are divorced, but she must stay in that house in an attempt to reconcile once again, perhaps seeing each other on regular basis, day and night, during the three months or the three periods that would encourage them to uh, resume their marriage life, and so on. So the Islamic way of divorce is prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if one does other than that, that's called bid'i, again is the sunnah, not in order with the sharia. Ah. The big question now whether this divorce count or does not. The vast majority of the Muslim jurists. Abu Hanifa, Abu Shafi'i, Ahmed, Abu Malik are of the view that if somebody divorced his wife while she is in her menses or divorced her three times at once such as saying you're divorced, you're divorced, you're divorced or such as the Arab normally say you're divorced three times that's called talaqun bid'i that's an innovation and that's a major sin that the husband has committed and he has to seek forgiveness from Allah and repent. But does it count? Does it count? Okay, the vast majority of the fuqaha are of the view that yes, it does count. And that's a divorce while the husband is a sinner. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and a few others are of the view that since it is bad'i, it does not count. The more right view in the light of the evidences is the view of the 